Cameron Levy, and this is the co-founder, Dustin Smith. And um, thanks for giving us the opportunity to, to come here and demo Beansprock with you all. Um, it's, it's very new. You guys are among the first to, to see the product. Um, we started Beansprock, a startup out of the MIT Media Lab. Um, we were part of an incubator program in the Media Lab. Um, and what we're, we're doing is building your personal tech job hunter. Um, we use artificial intelligence to go out and find your best role and your best company. Um, and right now we're focused in, in the Boston area to help folks around, around town. Um, so, you know, what, one of the things that inspired us to start Beansprock is kind of the jobs we had in the past. It was, you know, either we chose that job because it was, it was exactly what we wanted to be working on, um, or perhaps it was more about you know the company that we wanted to work for and we really admired the company or, or the problem it was working on but um, you know in, in our experience we never really had both and a lot of our friends they didn't have either I'm just curious how many people here feel like you know they're doing exactly what they want to be working on at you know the right place for them and they know it so okay about two percent and you're not just saying that because you're sitting next to your boss, right? <laughs> um, fair enough, fair enough. Um, so what we do is, is we go out and um, we basically search the job universe, um, so to speak, where we're pulling in jobs from various job boards um, and then delivering the best one to you based on your specific preferences in an email. And um, the product is, is, is great, obviously, if you're an active job seeker. Um, but uh, it's also really conducive the model for you know maybe someone who's kind of content in what they're doing but if the right opportunity came along they would definitely you know consider pursuing it or looking into it further um, you know and you can see that from you know you can the users can always control the frequency at, at which they receive job matches um, the, the, their data and information is always private. You know, it's not like LinkedIn where you're going to have recruiters and things going through profiles. This is all about you, the user, and recruiters, um, employers, no one will ever see your information unless you actually want to apply for the job. Um, so, as I, as I mentioned before, we send a, a daily email to you, and Dustin will walk through a little bit of what that looks like right now at this moment. Every day we... Um pull in a bunch of job descriptions from job boards, and then uh, run machine learning algorithms to find uh, the best match given each user's profile. Uh, here's an example of a job recommendation that's coming in as an email, and it says, uh, it's recommending the senior software engineer position at Distelli Incorporated, and uh, it gives a little bit of a description about the company, its logo, and it breaks down the recommendation into these different facets, so we've got Skills, um, the skills that you'll be able to use at this position. Um, this is matching the user's profile. This user has said that they like Linux, Python, software development algorithms, and Java. So we, we highlight those skills. Um, also, we're matching the company's market. So by um, when we pull in the, the company's description, we match it against databases that have background knowledge about the company. So we match it against CorpWatch, Freebase, LinkedIn, AngelList, and, um, and then we can infer that we can uh, list things like uh, this one operates in the markets, uh, cloud computing and enterprise software, and some other things. So um, we're, we're breaking it down to these components, and the idea here is that uh, if we just gave the person a recommendation and we said, this job is 99% compatible with you, they're not really gonna realize why that's a good recommendation, because Jobs are very multifaceted, and uh, the reasons why people like them are as well. So uh, we've broken it down into these different aspects, and we can uh, allow the user to critique them and give feedback. This is an example of what the user might receive um, in an email. And one of the cool things we've done is uh, users got, need to be able to tell us the things they like and dislike about a certain job so we can get better and better at it um, every single day that they receive a job match. So in this specific case, you know, this was a user who has these five skills that they want to use, and these are markets that they've told us they'd be interested in playing in, they want a company who's worked in these markets, um, the size that they're looking for, the company size, um, and then they can give us feedback, for example, about this job, 
And basically how we've done this feedback is we kind of took a page out of uh, Tender's book. I don't know if you are familiar with, with that, but basically there's a swiping mechanism where you can tell us about some of these other skills that are a part of this job, such as uh, DynamoDB, you know, this is a, another skill that you would use and learn in this job. You can say, yeah, you know, I'm interested in that. Data structures, no. You know, I don't like that stuff. Um, and then, you know, we'll ask you about other things such as, in this case, the markets that Distelli plays in. So you all already saw a couple that the user was really interested in, in working for. In this case, cloud computing. Yes, I'm interested in that. Maybe a four or three. Um, development platforms. Um, no, not really. So, um, in, in infrastructure as a service, no. Um, and then at the end, you can say, okay, how do I feel about Distelli? You know, in this case, I do like it. So I can select, yes, I want to see more jobs that come along for Distelli or not, right? And so this is one experience, one situation um, that a user can tell us to get better. And tomorrow, we're going to take their feedback into account. And again, we're looking right now at thousands of jobs in Boston and pulling in hundreds of new ones every single day. And so providing this feedback, we're gonna get better and better and better and ultimately give you a job where um, it's not just the best role for you, but it's gonna be a great company that's doing uh, something that you really wanna work in. Um, so with that, um, we'll wrap it up. I think we went a little longer, sorry about that. So a little shorter for Q&A. From all the industries that can apply machine learning or artificial intelligence, why did you choose the job market or the job market search? Because it seemed so bad. You know, like LinkedIn is, is the best product out there. And it's, it's I don't want, I know we're doing video and, and look, LinkedIn's great for what it, for what it does. Um, you know, it's a, it's a professional network and it's great for making those connections and introductions, but it's not the best that helping you really identify your best job out there. And certainly not the best at helping you figure out, you know, what's, what's a great company for you to, to work for, right? There's, you know, thousands of companies in Boston alone that, you know, we have no idea what they do. I, I maybe know a hundred and that's probably being generous, but you know, there's tons out there that I don't know. And there was, there's really no tool to help me find those companies. Yeah. When you're applying for jobs, it's a pretty time consuming act. Is there anything that would link Beansprock to easily apply for a position? So it's kind of a loaded, well, it's a loaded answer <laughs> to that question. But um, long story short, basic, sorry, the question was, is there a way to expedite the application process um, if you're interested in a job? And right now, so we're pulling some of these jobs from outside. Um, at this point, right? And so the best we can do at this moment is kind of redirect you to their job posting, you know, that's on their website, and then you just have to go through the normal channels. Um, one of the ways kind of leading into how we make money is in addition to showing these jobs that we find out there, we can also bring on, you know, employers in Boston who want to tell us a little more about their company, things like the culture, um, their tech stack, you know, stuff that a lot of people here really value, right? And, and we can help make matches based on those things as well. And in those cases, we can, you know, connect you directly to a hiring manager and get this thing moving much faster. Yep. Uh, this question about the artificial intelligence part. Uh, I think you said in the last answer that, that you can't just take a, a job listing and convert it into your internal formatting. So. What, what is the, can you summarize the artificial intelligence? You maybe have talked a little bit about it. The question is, uh, how do we use artificial intelligence because the job descriptions themselves are insufficient. Uh, they don't have enough information or they're vague. Um, yeah, that is a, an ongoing problem. Um, one way that we're able to do that is by figuring out what the company is. Uh, so the company usually comes in plain text or just a URL. We identify it by augmenting on all these additional background uh, knowledge bases. Also, we parse the job descriptions and take the skills, and the skills themselves have, um, are, are also vague. You could say JavaScript, uh, JS, Java space script, and so on. Um, we've got, uh, we use natural language processing to try to map it onto a taxonomy, and then we also have um, thousands of handwritten rules that map the, uh, the special cases. And we've got this nice um, human uh, computer, uh, well, man, man in the middle type 
uh, set up where every time there's something with a low confidence mapping, the next day we can receive a list of those and, and map them manually. So uh, a lot of these job descriptions don't actually give you salary indications. Do you also scrape sites like Glassdoor and match the company to get uh, you know, some indication of what the salary range would be, things like that? Or? Yes, yeah, well we've been, we've been using two, um, well two of our sources do have uh, uh, salary information um, and, and so we've selectively built towards them. Um, but there's also uh, ways that we could do an inference technique and look at the job title, look at the city, and feed that into a, uh, an algorithm that would predict the salary range. Um, of course, it would be within some interval. You wouldn't have an exact number, but well, you could approximate it. Glassdoor. Yeah, Glassdoor is a great set of training data. Or we could that. just use them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Last question. I didn't see on when you were showing the demo there, you were saying people want to show their skills, but do you have anything that actually says about their proficiency in those skills? I can tell you as an employer, a lot of times I get resumes that they have 30 things that, that supposedly have skills in, and when you drill them on them, the three that you really want, they barely know. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So, um, you know, this is this this part of the application is really more catered toward you, the, the the job seeker, right? So, it's more about helping you find your best job out there based on the skills that you find both interesting, right? The ones that that interest you more than all of your other skills. So, if they have thirty, we're going to ask you, okay, what are what are the the top four that interest you most? We're also asking you, you know, which you think are your best four. And yeah, it's self-reported, but it might give some indication, right, of, of proficiency. Um, but, but this application is for the you know, job seeker, and then if we're making a match, like we're connecting, then there's another step in the process where we try to do a better job of validating, okay, are their skills legitimate? Can they do what they say they can for this job before we'll make that match to the employer customer? Yep, that's it.